how to play that difficult lob shot over a bunker. Let's do it. Let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. In this series, we're going to look at all things short game. So we're going to be looking at pitching, chipping and putting. Not to mention bunkers. Bunkers. Today we're going to look at the shot everybody dreads, which is up and over a bunker. We're going to give you two different ways of playing this shot. The last thing you want to do is leave it in the bunker. The next last thing you want to do is blade it over the bunker. So without any yeah. further ado, let's get down. Okay guys, so we're here today on the third hole at the Els Club. So thank you very much to the guys for letting us come out here. So James is going to go first and he's going to display what shot he would play over this bunker. So James, talk us through Now, first things first, this really isn't the shot you would want to leave yourself. So if you are kind of planning on a hole, uh, we've got a little bit of green to work with, but apart from that, we've not really got much else going for us. So I'm going to choose a lob wedge with 60 degrees of loft on there to help me get the ball flighted, to help me get it up in the air. That way I can choose my landing area, and that is something we will move on to and talk about more in future short game Saturdays. So I'm going to open the face up on this club, give myself plenty of loft, and from there I know that I need to keep the speed through the ball in order to get the ball in the air, get it over the bunker, and for me, that shot's done everything I wanted it to do. It had plenty of loft on it. It's landed nice and softly. There was plenty of speed through the ball to make sure the ball got over the bunker. One thing that I don't want to see people do is open the face up, lose the speed, decelerate, and leave the ball plugged in the face. That is a big no in my book. Chris, how would you play the shot? So, a little bit different to James. I have gone with the 56 degree, okay? We have got around about, I would say, five paces in between the bunker and the flag. So I want to give us a shot that is going to be less high tariff, hopefully more consistent. So I'm going to have a shorter swing and I'm going to play it a little bit like a putt. Okay, because we've got enough green, I think we can get something that's going to launch high enough and then roll maybe up to the flat. Again here, I'm going to keep the shaft nice and tall. The ball position stays just in front of center. And from here, I'm going to make a small motion like that. Nice shot. Oh. And so you can see there, guys, another thing that Chris did really well there was something which I did quite well in my shot as well. You kept the speed there. He didn't slow down and the ball luckily didn't plug into the face. That's it, we've got to keep the speed through the shot. One fault I sometimes see with this is what people will do is lo lose speed and try and help the ball into the air. So we want to make sure that we can keep that speed, keep our body turning and we can come out with a consistent shot that is another option. So as you can see here guys, two very safe shots, two pretty good shots to be fair. I've got mine here, I've got about 10 feet left for the par. Chris has pretty much guaranteed his par. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you do hit those comments below and let us know what would you like to see in 2020 to help you with your short game. Chris, thank you so much for coming on. Really thank appreciate it. Guys, Chris is our short game and putting specialist and he will be with us every Saturday, luckily, to help you with your short game. So make sure you get those comments below. Make sure you get those questions below and ask Chris all things short game. Apart from that, guys, hit that like button if you have enjoyed that content. Make sure you do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, we very much look forward seeing you next Saturday next Saturday same time same place